This is a geometry problem. What? Well, let's explore how. So we have the square root of y squared minus 1 over 16. What does that remind us of? The Pythagorean theorem. So let's imagine a right triangle with a hypotenuse of length y and a altitude of length 1 over 4. By the Pythagorean theorem, we have that this other leg over here will be precisely the square root of y squared minus 1 over 16. We have the square root of z squared minus 1 over 16 here. We can use very similar logic. So let's say we have this thing over here is z, and we have this side here. Whoops. <laughs> So we have this is precisely the square root of z squared minus 1 over 16. Together, they form x. So we have, okay, this part is the square root of y squared minus 1 over 16. This part is the square root of z squared minus 1 over 16. Together, they form x. So let's just erase these arrows now and say x here. We can use very similar logic on the next equation. Okay. The y equals the square root of z squared minus 1 over 25. Okay, let's see. Y, square root of z squared minus 1 over 25. What could that look like? So we have z over here. I'm trying to match up z above because, you know, just so you have some scale. Let's say we have 1 over 5 here. So we have 1 over 5 here. And then this part is going to be exactly what we're looking for, the square root of z squared minus 1 over 25. And now we also need to find the square root of x squared minus 1 over 25. And we can do that very similarly. We take that here, same exact logic now, x, x, 1 over, 1 over 5, by Pythagorean theorem, this is going to be the square root of x squared minus 1 over 25. And together, they just form y. So y. Okay, final one, z equals the square root of x squared minus 1 over 36. Okay, x we have here, and we have minus 1 over 36, so we have altitude of length 1 over 6 here. This quantity over here is precisely that. And then we have the square root of y squared minus 1 over 36, which we represent like that, y. And together they form z, same logic we've been doing. So z over here, and guess what? x, y, z. X, Y, Z. X, Y, Z. And I know my drawings aren't perfect, but they all have the same side legs. And therefore, they're congruent by SSS congruence. Okay, so we still have to find X, Y, and Z though. We found these triangles, which are nice, but how do we actually use them? So we don't, we do know the altitudes, which you might think is kind of random information, but it's actually really powerful. So one thing to consider maybe is area. Why area? Well, we have some resemblance of a height. We have the height and we have some variable for a side length. So we can maybe write area equals half base, which is x, times the height, which is 1 over 4. Area equals half x times 1 fourth. Okay, over here, guess what? The height is y. Sorry, the base is y and the height is 1 over 5 area equals half y 1 over 5. Okay, and last area equals half z 1 over 6. And guess what? All three of these areas are the exact same. We can actually use this information to find the ratio of x to y to z. Well, guess what? We have 1 half times 1 fourth over here. We have 1 half times 1 fifth over here. And we have 1 half times 1 sixth over here. Let's just say x is 8a, where a is just another constant, okay? 8a. 
let's say y is just 10a. Why? Because 8a a times 1a is a, right? 10a times 1 tenth is a. And by that same logic, let's say z is 12a. Because then 12a times 1 half times 1 six is a. So we have the area of this triangle that we've been looking for all along is just a. So now we know the ratio of the sides. We know x is a, a y is 10a, z is 12a. So let's just put that in. Why deal with three variables when we can deal with one, right? So let's just put 8a, 10a, 12a. Okay, so essentially we're trying to solve for x, y, and z, but we found x, y, and z in terms of one variable. Now all we have to do is solve for a. And how do we do this? The key, find the area of a triangle in a fourth way. What is that? Heron's formula. Okay, so we have 8a, 10a, and 12a. The sum, that's 18a plus 12a, 30a. Okay, so the perimeter is 30a, the semi-perimeter, 15a. So let's just write that out. Area equals the square root of semi-perimeter times, okay, so we have semi-perimeter, semi-perimeter minus the first length, that's 5a semi-perimeter minus the second length, that's 3a. semi-perimeter minus the third length, that's 7a. And that is equal to the area. But you know what else the area is equal to? a. And guess what this is? This is an equation for a, exactly what we've been looking for. Okay, let's simplify our square root mass here. So we have four a's, a, 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 a to the four. If you take that outside the square root, that's just a squared. So we have a equals to a squared times the square root of 15 times 5 times 3. Well, let's just say that's 15 too, times 7. And we can simplify this to 15 a squared root 7 equals a. Cool. And now let's just divide by 8 of both sides. And of course, we can't have that equal anymore. And now we say a is 1 over 7, 15 root 7. Okay, and then now all we have to do is multiply by 8, 10, and 12 to get x, y, and z. And these are our final answers. How you solve this monstrosity of equation with just simple geometry.